Hi there, this is Billy Earl here with Lower Shore Politics. You can find us on YouTube at Lower Shore Politics as well as here at home on PAC 14. Today's guest, and we are honored to have him here, is Dr. Kirkland Hall, a professor of kinesiology at UMES, and just as important, if not more, so, a candidate for the House in 38A. Doctor, thank you so much for coming, coming in today. Tell me how the campaign is going. First, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, it has been an experience, a uh, proud of one which I will never forget. Uh, uh, I'm just humbled, uh, delighted at the support that I've been getting, uh, individuals that have been calling, the invitations I've been getting to speak. Uh, I've been all through basically Worcester County now, making my uh, uh, appearances in Somerset County. It's just been a delight. I'm just happy to be a part of it. Absolutely. The, uh, the feedback, and there's a significant about, uh, amount of it that I'm getting, is how grateful and how happy the progressive community in Salisbury and Wicomico uh, and Somerset and Worcester are to have a, uh, a man of your ilk who can represent the Eastern Shore in a different way than it has been represented before. What are your thoughts on this? Well, one thing, I've been following uh, East Shore politics for a, a long time. And one of the things that I have noticed, and if you read all historical accounts, we are referred to as a land in which time has forgotten. And there's a reason for that. Uh, we've got to be more outspoken, we've got to be more assertive, we've got to be more aware of the facts and issues that impact all people on the Lord's and shore, and not just issues that confront just a few. We have a number of, a bevy of issues, a bevy of problems that people are experiencing, and it's important to look at those issues from the bottom all the way to the top, not take away from those who are successful, but also bring those from the bottom, helping them have some hope and dreams that they can be successful one day. Well, there's a lot of things that need to change on the Eastern Shore. Uh, of that, I am certain. Um, as, a, as a single House of Delegate member, um, you can have influence there far beyond what uh, a single person um, who's not elected to office can have. When people are talking to you about things that are on their minds, what kind of things are you hearing? Well, first of all, one of the most important things, I think, in any profession is to be a, a good listener. And one of the things I found out, especially talking to young people, they claim that people my age, 60 and above, do not listen to the young people. We're only concerned with issues that impact us. Uh, first of all, we're all concerned about retirement. We're all concerned about job security. We're all concerned about being able to hold on to our jobs during a certain periods of our life. But young people have dreams, and they have hopes. They aspire to do great things. And it's important for us to make sure that we smooth uh, the roadway so that they can be successful in, in their endeavors. So there are a number of issues. Uh, Health care is a concern. Uh, free tuition is a concern. And I'm amazingly surprised that a number of young people are concerned about the environment and how it's going to be when they right. become adults. And that's the most surprising issue. Yeah, it... Um I have a stepson who's in his uh, early 30s, and uh, I remember before he left the area, like many kids do, um, he was interested in, for instance, the, uh, um, the wind project that was taking mm -hmm. place in Ocean City, and he thought, well, that would be uh, a great new career because mm -hmm. that industry is going nowhere but up. Mm -hmm. But of course, that has fallen on hard times because somebody in Ocean City seems to think that people will not come to the beach if there is a speck on the, on the sea line roughly the size of the width of a, uh, of a fingernail and that that will prevent them from going to the beach. I know it wouldn't with me, but young people seem to be saying, no, let's get those jobs. Let's be environmentally uh, sensitive. Let's, let, let's move ahead lockstep and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then people my age are saying, no, we don't want to do anything that we theoretically feel will hurt the, uh, the tourist trade 
in Ocean City. It seems like very antiquated thinking. I think what I've found, and especially living in the county of Somerset, you know, our motto is Simmer Edom, which means always the same. It means that nothing's going to change as long as those uh, that have been in control for years remain in control. But if I, I, I don't see any problem uh, with the, the wind turbines. I, I, I really don't see I would continue going up to the city. I would right. take my family because anything that we could use to provide jobs yeah. for the young people, and that's an issue that I have caused so many concerns. Our young people leave here in droves because opportunities are not there. Yeah. And as a senior citizen, as a person running for the House of Delegates, we understand that there are wishes that young people have. And we've got to work with them. It's been vetted by most of the involvement agencies. Uh, they do not see any major issues with them. Now, with fracking, I would say something different. Yeah. But this is something that seems to be clean. It's clean energy. It provides jobs for young people, opportunities for young people, and also enhance our uh, uh, economic that's that picture in the communities. Seems like a win-win, doesn't it? Definitely. Yeah. What else are people are? What else are they saying to you? For instance, about the um, uh, the chicken industry and the way that they build these, um, I guess Henry Ford style uh, assembly line uh, chicken complexes. In the newspaper this morning, there's an article. I, I can't think of the young man's name, but I'm happy to say he's a graduate of U.S. Merrill Eastern Shore. Uh huh. He and his family just won an award uh, for how they have been working to preserve the environment through their particular small farm uh, poultry industry. And I believe if the major companies would take the same initiative that this family take, I think the poultry industry would not be the problem that it is. I'm, I would say in it unequivocally, I oppose the CAFOs. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot uh, deviate from that. I can't go back on that. It causes too many environmental problems. And we have the scientists on one side, scientists on the other side. But the thing about it, those scientists on the environmental side are not getting any remuneration, not getting any funding. Right. This is research that they want to do to protect the environment. Now, I'm not questioning the honesty and integrity of those other uh, agencies. But evidence show that those large poultry uh, CAFOs cause severe problems in our communities. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we're looking at how our young kids are, are leaving the community. We have other families now that want to leave the community because they don't want to live adjacent to that. And here's another point. I hear, uh, I said, Mr. Hall, if you look at all this land, it is zoned agriculture. Why was it zoned agriculture? Mm -hmm. Because members of the farming industry were in charge during those particular, that particular era. Right. So therefore, they can protect their investment, which I don't have any quarrels with that, but times are changing. Land use is changing. People are changing. Yeah. And if individuals want to come to live in Somerset County, Worcester County, Wacombe County, they should be able to come and enjoy life and have peace and tranquility and not to worry about not going outside, having to smell of these odors that come from these large uh, industrial-sized farming industries. On top of the, uh, the inconvenience of the smell, though, there seems to be mounting evidence regarding long-term health issues um, that are, are above and beyond. Um, not only the asthma issues, but the cancer issues. Um, are young people concerned about that? I think most of them are. Uh, again, I teach a number of health classes, and I ask them to do a family tree. And let me know uh, how the older generation uh, uh, who died in their families, and most of them say it was, it was because of cancer. Mm -hmm. Then number say diabetes. But we have to understand that cancer in Somerset County, it has the highest incidence of death rate. Uh, yeah. We look at Sussex County in Delaware also ranks very high. Well, Common Code ranks high. But one of the other issues that I think that we're overlooking uh, is the fact that once 
these plants are, are put in place, it's tough to replace or the damage that have occurred from these large uh, 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 industrial-sized poultry houses that are placed in. Also, Somerset County is the poorest county in the state of Merle. Yeah. Have all traditionally been the poorest county in the state of Merle. So why would we want to bring an industry in a large scale? And let me phrase, make sure this clear. I support the small farmers. Yeah. 100%. But I do not support the large industry size CAFOs that are, that are coming in. It supports County State of Maryland. Therefore, no more people don't have health insurance. They have no way, to, no, have no, no transportation even to get to the doctors. Yeah. So, therefore, now we're putting a double whammy on those folk who just want to live. They're trying to survive the best way they can. They're unemployed. Now they got another issue that's going to impact their life and the life of their children. It's pretty serious stuff, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, heart, it's, it's heart-wrenching, and it? it's really sad that we, uh, some in this country, place economics and the money we put in our pocket over the lives of our citizens. And that's really sad, because they have no voice. Yeah. They don't have the funds to fight uh, these large companies. And that's the sad thing about it. Wow. Um, when you're out on the trail and you're, and you're talking to people, uh, what else are you hearing about? things that, that people, both young and old, are interested in and want to see a new style of leadership, a more progressive style of leadership? I think one of the uh, common themes that I hear is that most citizens want their candidates, elected officials, want to listen to their concerns and work to improve their quality of life and standard of living. They do not want the life that they lead and their children and grandkids be subjected to that same type of lifestyle. Right. And that seems to me the biggest cry that I hear, especially in, in Somerset, because again, Port Canada, State of Maryland, and there's no evidence that's going to change in the near future. So therefore, we've got to come up with a plan. It's going to take some time, but it has to put a plan in place. And that plan has, basically has to start with our educational system, right. with our vocational education. And we've got to find areas that our young people can work, uh, can get certification in, but get employed in our community. And that's where we have problems. They can work, they can get a degree, and then once they get the certification, there's nothing for them in the community. Nothing for, it, for them to so point towards. So we have to start somewhere and try to put some, something in place so that a young person, a young male or female, can go to school, and, and go, what young person? They want to go to school, study, do all this homework, just to work in a poultry plant. Yeah. I mean, I got family members who are working there, not by choice, because that's the only position that they can find. And again, we are a society not as advanced as this, these United States of America is today. There are more opportunities that we could bring to the lower shore than what we have now. Okay. You know how in every uh, political race there are always... Um, I guess mythologies or legends that are created about certain people and and the work that they've done and your list is is unusually long but one of the areas and I'd like you just to kind of tell the story of how this this occurred was the uh, the tragic events in in Somerset the uh, the death of these children by a, uh, a heating mechanism um, as I understand it, um, you were kind of a, a lone voice in this, but not for long because you, you made yourself heard. Tell us how that story goes. Uh, I want to clarify one thing. I have to uh, give some credence and credit to uh, Commissioner Craig Mathias. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at work. And he called me and said, uh, Brother Hall, there's a tragedy that occurred downtown Princess Anne. A family of seven, and uh, seven children and a father, have died. And the first thing went through my mind was a type of suicide. Okay. That the father may have lost control and took the lives of his children and then the lives of his That's the first thing, because of television. Yeah. 
But then when I arrived on the scene, I talked to the sheriff and the, and the fire marshal and the, uh, uh, and others were there and they told me that they died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Right. And all honesty, I was dumbfounded in this day and age yeah. how that could happen. And they asked me, I want to go in and see the young children? And I said, no. I said, Mr. Hall, it's like they sleep. You won't see any bruises on them. I said, no, I'd rather not see them that way. Yeah. And uh, eventually uh, I watched them bring the bodies out of the house in body bags and throw them in the back of a van. And, you know, I, it, was, it was so sad to see from the biggest uh, to the smallest child. And that night as I sat home, my son uh, went to school with one of them. And he said, uh, Papa, are you, why are you crying? And so he crying for Bree Bree, one of the young girls he went to school with. And I said, son, that's, it, it says, let daddy think just for a minute. And I appreciate you. So I thought about it, I said, let me call uh, uh, Commissioner Mathias. And then I called Sen Senator Mathias. And I talked to him about it and asked him what steps could be taken. And he advised me to do some investigation, which I did. He made a arrangement for me to meet with uh, Demola Power, which we did, along with Craig Mathias. And we got some positive feedback from mm -hmm. Demola Power. And of course, Delegate Sheree Sample Hughes also took out the fight. And it was just a tragedy that I hope that never uh, you know, occur again uh, on, on, in any community. But we're thankful that uh, the senators and the delegates all agreed uh, that, that some steps, positive steps should be taken. And that is a carbon dioxide detector in all rental property. Right. And I think that uh, would help. Uh, it would ensure the safety of young children. And again, even if uh, a father or mother or grandfather made a mistake of placing a gas uh, operating machine in the house, they would protect it because of that, that machine right. would go off. And uh, so we are happy that it turned out positive. And uh, it's just one of the best things that I've ever had. I'll bet. Yeah, it's always sad, sadder when, uh, when children perish, especially oh, yes. in a um, situation like this where seemingly the legislation that would require a uh, CO2 um, alarm in the house should have been done long before, you would think. Again, uh, one of the things we have to think about uh, in this so-called leader, we've got to think progressively. Mm -hmm. And although it's too late for that family, but you have to think about some things that can happen. Uh, for an example, uh, we're looking at the tragedies or the, the, the incidents that happen at our athletic events in public schools. Right. Uh, that could escalate into something much more tragic than what has happened today. And I t talked to the uh, assistant superintendent at uh, Worcester County, and I asked him what steps had the county taken right. in the event, because the climate that we live in, someone might want, might bring a gun to a basketball game yeah. or a football game, frustrated with something happened on the job or happened in the family, and their team loses, and then they lose it. And now we have gunshots and all types of things going on at an athletic event. Again, with young children and other people there. I said, what steps are they taking? It ha it's gotten so bad now. And shamefully, again, we have to have metal detectors. Yeah. At all athletic yeah. events, which is a sad state of affairs. But, yeah, it is. But we have to look at the climate, happened in the public schools, look what happened at the post office years ago when we people were going postal, have to look at all these issues that's just happening. We have to take steps to prevent it. It will protect lives. The um, the transition that you're preparing to make from a uh, from the world of academia <laughs> and athletics mm -hmm. to uh, to legislator, um, you're looking forward to it, I imagine. Well, one of the I basically unconsciously, I've been planning for years. Yeah. I teach a course called Contemporary Issues in Kinesiology, Exercise, Science, and uh, Sports. In that class, we talk about issues that impact the lives of the students, impact the lives of the communities. Yeah. Once we find an issue, the class has to write a public policy. We look at the, why they're doing the research, prior research, uh, uh, 
what they think that could be implemented to ensure that the, the, the problem can be curtailed. And at the end, they write what they will recommend to any local official or to those in, in, in power. Okay. And throughout the years, I've had some, some great ones, even abuse in, from in nursing homes, from police brutality, uh, from uh, teachers, uh, disciplinary actions in, in public schools. And now we're doing one on whether or not teachers should carry guns in public schools. Right. And then so happened, the teacher was in, in California, uh, the gun went off in the school system. So, you know, right is more guns the issue or is it education? Again, as we all talk about mental health, we got all types of issues we've got to concern ourselves with. But I definitely don't think more guns is the issue. It doesn't seem like that's the, uh, it seems like that's the answer only for the people who make and sell guns. Yes. 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 And I t we were talking about the uh, Second Amendment and our founding fathers. And I, I, I see all the time and we talk about history in our class. I don't think the founding fathers ever thought there'd be AK-15s and no. those kind of guns that would impact our lives. Uh, they had the muskets mm -hmm. and one shot. And I don't think, again, that, that they looked at, they could envision that society would be like it is today with the abuse of using firearms. They're not used for protection. It's used to hurt people. And some students that were coached, uh, guns don't, people don't, guns don't kill people. People, the people don't kill people. No, it's guns do not kill people. People kill it's people. It's people yeah. kill people. Yes, but some. That's right. And the kids, how do we protect and prevent them from getting possession of guns? And that's the mystery and that's the puzzle. Yeah, the uh, Second Amendment is, uh, is badly twisted um, to support this feeling that people should have guns that really have no use in hunting. Um, the origin of Second Amendment um, was the, the founding fathers were attempting to garner the support of the Virginia delegation. Mm -hmm. The Virginia delegation wanted um, the, 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 the gun amendment included because they wanted to support at the time what was known as slave militias. Mm -hmm. They were very much afraid after the Bacon Rebellion mm -hmm. that, that black and white poor would band together and overthrow the, the oligarchy. So this gave not only the, the guns, but um, in places like Georgia, um, everybody, uh, all of the landowners were required to be part of this militia. It is a far cry from what is, is served up by the NRA and their shells mm -hmm. as to why we have a Second Amendment, what it means, um, and unfortunately they, what they tend to use to support this is the Federalist Papers, which at the time was nothing more than propaganda to encourage people to sign on to the Constitution and the various amendments. So we got here on a very crooked road, and now we have young people. Now, I am thrilled with the way that young people are getting involved in politics, the Jake Burdettes of the world, the Jared uh, Scheinblas, the Michelle Gregory's, the Michael Feldman's, the people who are getting uber involved mm -hmm. in politics, mm -hmm. but there is a place for old folks like you and I <laughs> to uh, to still be involved because we've been around the block once or twice. Bring a little wisdom to the table. A little wisdom to the table and uh, to be able to, to mm -hmm. some degree, to um, uh, governor uh, some of the expectations because things in a society run by the wealthy, which is what we have in the United mm -hmm. States. Um, changes slowly. Yes. And so it is a question mm -hmm. of perseverance. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, your race comes up in, uh, in November. Um, if I'm sitting out there watching this on YouTube or on PAC-14, how do I get a hold of Dr. Kirkland Hall to come out and go door to door to make some telephone calls to host a house party? Now, how do I get that done? One through email. Kirkland Hall 44 at gmail.com. Uh, phone numbers 410 651 4546. 
my wife doesn't know it, but she's my secretary. Uh, <laughs> 410-603-3367, and we'll try to respond, and, and we'll have to uh, the contact. We'll try to do it as, as, as expeditiously as possible. But Bill, let me con uh, say one more thing. Uh, the opiate and heroin problem that we yeah. have in our community. That has impacted a, a number of people, uh, hurt a lot of families, separate a lot of families. But in our communities, we have an acceptable appetite for drugs. And we have got to come up with some type of plan and and I, I know it's going to take the act of God, whatever, to change the, 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 the desire for individuals uh, to have for drugs. And it's the rich, it's the poor, it's the black, and it's white. But somehow we've got to uh, continue educating our young children when they're small, uh, let families know that because they may lack substance, that's finances or some things that Drugs is not the way because young children basically watch what they see adults do. Right. And not only that, it's about our parents making sure that we're talking to our young people, letting them know the dangers, and ask them, if, are there any problems? I think we've gotten too busy with our own personal interests that we've forgotten all about our young people, that they have problems, they have concerns, and even with the bullying that's going on in public schools. Yeah. We've got to pay attention if a child tells us something we got to understand that child's not telling us that just because they want to fib to us. We've got to do some investigation. We've got to take our time and stop what we're doing immediately and check on the welfare and safety of, of our children. Yeah. And I think we just got away from that, that family-oriented uh, philosophy we should have in days of old. Wow. Sitting down at the table. Yeah. Having dinner. Uh, even if you're watching TV together, you know, stop and just ask some questions and just see how young people are feeling. Mm -hmm. And then again, old adults, we have, to, we have to do the same thing. Yeah. Because depression and loneliness cause people to do a lot of things. Yeah, it does. That they would not all know to do. So we've got a number of issues, but we've got to be vocal. We've got to let the world know that we're concerned about it. And one of the problems question you ask, young people want to know, where is it, where do we stand? Kirk where do you stand right. on issues? And are you going to stand by that issue? Or you gonna change because somebody flapped a few dollars to it? Yeah. I thought I've been poor all my life. Money is not long as I can pay my bills, feed my family. I put my daughter through medical school, put myself through school, enough something through college. I'm happy and content. How much money do a person need to survive? Right. How much money do a person need to live? But my dream has always been to always to help to improve the quality of life of others. That's why I'm in health professions. That's why I coach. That's why I teach to make people better individuals. Wow. Well said. Um, we are just about out of time. Once again, um, your email address is kriplinhall44 at gmail.com. And that phone number? 410-651-4546 or 410-603-3367. Okay. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for coming by today. And as always, you are just a, uh, an encyclopedia of wisdom and, uh, and progressive forethought. This is Billy Earl, and this is another episode of Lower Shore Politics with Dr. Kirkland Hall. I'm just looking to be reborn. I'm just looking for.